So new compulsory standards for lighting in South Africa have been gazetted by the Trade and Industry Department. Going forward, all light bulbs that are not energy efficient LEDs will be banned. The standards aim to improve safety and energy efficiency. To speak more on this, I'm joined by Kay Walsh from Nova Economics. Kay, thanks so much for your time this evening. Now, we know that you at Nova were uh, very involved in doing this study for the department to make sure that uh, all the, the necessary uh, due diligence had been done and to sort of lay a plan going forward. So tell us, what do the new compulsory specifications for energy efficient lighting entail? Um, well, the, the specifications have four um, aspects to them, but the main um, parameter is the efficiency of the lamps. So that's measured in lumens per watt or brightness, if you like, per um, power uh, consumption, basically. Um, and so the new regulations set the minimum for energy efficiency at 90 lumens per watt for the first two years, and then that goes up to 105 lumens per watt for the for the, the following period. Um, and effectively what that does is it removes all inefficient household lighting from the market, which includes halogen lamps, compact fluorescents, um, and the remaining incandescents that might still be in use. So this only comes into effect next year. How will the rollout be practically implemented? Um, well, it's a compulsory specification, so that means by law uh, you're not allowed to, you won't be able to have um, non-compliant lamps on the shelves of your stores after May 24 next year. Um, ideally, the regulations would have come into force a little earlier, um, but yeah, we it, it does mean that major retailers will start to phase those products out of their their stores. So it's not a case of going into people's homes and forcing them to replace bulbs that are already in use there. It's merely the sale um, and then the rollout over a period of years will mean that uh, energy uh, efficient lighting is phased in and those that are not efficient will be phased out. But let's talk a little bit about the impact on consumers in terms of initial cost. Um, so the study we did, which was commissioned by Department of Energy um, and the UNDP a few years ago, showed that we could realize significant energy savings if we just encouraged consumers by regulation to purchase more efficient lighting. Um, and that actually consumers could save about three between 300 gigawatt hours and 700 gigawatt hours of energy a year. Um, and that would amount to around 12 billion rands worth of energy cost savings over 15 years. Um, so the savings, the potential benefit of just introducing a simple piece of regulation were enormous. Um, and the reason for that is that when you go and buy an electric lamp at a general hardware or, or store, you'll tend to, as a consumer, just buy the cheapest lamp that you can see um, on the shelf. And those are often the least efficient or the lowest quality. And so it'll actually end up costing you a lot more of the life cycle of that lamp. So despite the, the uh, large uh, savings over a long term, uh, you're saying that these products are likely to be a little bit more expensive uh, when you're purchasing them at the store. Uh, we know that uh, there were some subsidies uh, previously when, when certain forms of lighting were phased out before. Is that likely to happen again or is this just going to be, well, you know, hang on, people need to bite the bullet? Um, yeah, I think the the irony is that the cheaper lamps end up costing you significantly more over time. You have to replace them more often. Um, they, if they're lower quality, they're likely to be more faulty. But it's just not something a consumer is going to spend a lot of time researching when they, yeah, they might do it if they were purchasing a car, but they're certainly not going to spend a lot of time researching which lamp they should be purchasing and whether it's worth paying double the upfront cost. So the regulation is basically just a nudge to ensure that consumers who are not going to spend the time researching these products actually make decisions in their own interest. Um, oh. I think fortunately the price of LED has come down quite a lot. So um, yeah, it's not going to be a huge yeah. increase in prices. We know that consumer spending power often determines whether 
retailers will stick to these regulations or not? Do we, do we know if we're going to be seeing these regulations implemented uh, or enforced at import level? Because it's very difficult, uh, you know, for police, uh, you know, I don't know whether we're going to have energy police by then, but, but to enforce uh, sale of non-efficient lighting in hundreds of thousands of retailers across the country when they're so overburdened already with basic law and order. Um, yeah, so that was one of the major risks to the implementation or to the results that we got in our study was that if you have very poor enforcement of any law, you're obviously not going to get the desired results. I think fortunately in South Africa, in the case of electric lamps, the vast majority are sold by formal retailers or retail chains who will comply with the, the requirements. But there's always a risk that, um, you know, you'll have inferior lights on the black market and it's tempting for consumers to just buy the cheapest product available. Mm. Um, so yeah, that is a major risk. And in practice, what that means is the NRCS has to send um, measurement and verification people to the stores to test the lamps at random um, and to ensure that any supplier or importer who's imported an inferior lamp is, uh, faces penalties. And that's something that we, um, yeah, we strongly advocated they improve as their ability to enforce their regulations and standards. Mm. On a broader energy issue, um, I know that Nova has been very uh, directly involved in the pricing of energy. You're very directly involved in ESCOM studies. Um, a study by Afro Barometer recently found that nearly uh, six out of 10 South Africans felt that privatizing ESCOM is the only solution to our current energy crisis. But that negates of certain social issues, such as ESCOM's work to provide access to the grid for economically excluded citizens who were denied access to electricity under apartheid. And we know that nearly 95% of South African citizens now do have access to the grid, whether they get power uh, regularly or not. So given the complexity of the various issues at play, what's your opinion about privatization of ESCOM? Um, I, yeah, I fully understand the sentiment. We're now in our 15th year of, of load shedding. Um, and I think consumers are just very, well, South Africans in general are very frustrated with the situation. And I think they feel, yeah, perhaps the only hope is privatization. In reality, yeah, having worked with ESCOM, on many different issues over the years. And um, the issues are far more complex and the blame doesn't solely lie at ESCOM's um, feet. Um, but yeah, I think privatization of generation and encouraging the private sector to participate as much as possible um, through uh, good incentives and regulation and deregulation is a positive. Um, but if you like, ESCOM's wire business is a bit like the highways. You can't really privatize the national roads and as such, you can't really privatize transmission and, and distribution infrastructure, which is ESCOM's wires business. Um, that just needs to be um, unbundled, which I, I believe is in process. Um, and they have to be uh, starting to manage that so that they can encourage the uptake of distributed energy resources. So that would be the, the PV and the solar that you and I would put on our roofs or um, small, smaller plants that private sector investors would, would build need to be connected to those highways. And I suppose the, the, the small role that every South African can play is by making sure that they stick to the regulations, invest in energy uh, efficient lighting where they can, if there is such a massive saving, not only in terms of, of money over time, but in terms of energy made available, um, then that's certainly a contribution every household can make. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, that was Kay Walsh from Nova Economics.